of the time or something. Well, we'll get started anyway. I'm so glad we could be here today. I'm going to have a few announcements. We'll have a few announcements, and then we'll sing a uh, one hymn, and then we'll have a uh, prayer, and then we'll do two more hymns, and we'll get right into our lesson. Um, announcements. Uh, this is just an optional announcement. Uh, Grandview Baptist Church is having a theatrical drama called The Choice, a dramatic Easter presentation. This is showing at, on Saturday the 3rd at 6 p.m. And then, well, and then Sunday. But y'all don't need to go there on Sunday. But No, it is, but it is showing at 9 o'clock a.m. Sunday morning and the 11 o'clock main service. But um, uh, Saturday evening, uh, 6 o'clock, I'm sure, I know that uh, we've seen them. Uh, they're practicing, practicing, practicing. Um, I'm going to assume it's going to be very well done, and it'll probably be very enjoyable to to see. And so, if you, uh, we'll have Tiffany's going to put these out on the foyer there. It'll just be a nice time. Uh, we'll probably we're probably going to go Saturday evening and uh, check it out. Oh, Easter! We're going Easter Sunday. No. Okay, we're gonna we'll probably go Saturday evening and just. Uh, um, See how things are. That is, if I have sermon ready for Sunday. You never know. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of our plan. And uh, we just want to invite everyone. I'm sure it'll be a nice time. And, and like I say, it'll probably be very well done and enjoyable, I'm sure. And so we just thought we'd uh, share that tonight. Uh, of course, the hunt is uh, less than two weeks away. Um, it's like 10 days away. And we're excited, we're excited for that. Uh, we've been out uh, flyering. Uh, neighborhoods last night, Monday night. I bet we got 400 flyers out, maybe. 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 Tops. So I only got like 2,100 more to go. So we'll get it. And uh, we're excited. You know, we've had nothing but a good response uh, besides your occasional person that's just unhappy with life anyway. But. You know, we've had we've had a very good response from our community and from those uh, with families and children, and so we're excited for that. And of course, that's coming. Uh, if you're able, um, only if you're able, uh, from eight to eight twenty this evening, I would like to have a time of prayer, praying for the hunt, praying for the future of uh, Springwater Baptist Church. Um, I don't know a ton about them. I just heard about some shootings this week. Maybe praying for the victims of, of those particular cases. Again, I don't know. I think, one, was there two that have, or just one in Colorado? I heard one about one in Colorado. But I thought I heard another about another one in Idaho. Uh, anyway, I, I know one in, in Colorado. I don't want to spread rumor. But I, I do know of one uh, shooting that happened that was uh, pretty dramatic. Anyway, we'll pray for the uh, families there. Um, otherwise, yes, if you're able, Sunday, this Sunday, after service, um, we are going to be stuffing eggs with candy. If you're able to stay, that would be a blessing. Hey, you know what? However you want to go about, you know. Um, Well, they're about that big. We have some here if you want to look at them. Any, uh, any just, you know, mini candies will work just fine. A bag of mini candies. And it looks like we're doing really well on candies. Uh, looks like somebody brought um, uh, uh, some from Winco in the bulk. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm confessing, like, I, I, I grabbed some. I, I was heading out flowering, and I'm like, I need, and I'm like, an open bag. I know. I know. Like, I'm. I just. My wife Tiffany's like, you can't take those. I'm like, I'm going out flights. I said, you gonna muzzle the ox to tread without the corn? I'm taking candy. You know. <laughs> wrap. Yeah, individually wrapped. Yeah. And uh, we can. I can show you kind of what we have as an example before you leave. Just individually wrapped. 
and uh, if they're in a sealed bag I won't get into them but if they're in a bulk bag with a little tie on them yeah I'm just like well I'm like listen we gotta we, <laughs> so anyway um, I only had a couple ten maybe ten maybe ten but there was a lot in the bag anyway I'll replace them it was <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad we can have a good time tonight. Um, <laughs> Joe, you want to come up? And we'll, we'll, not, now. not now. I'm going to buy you a banana cream pie. <laughs> let, me, let me say, though, that uh, I was talking to Terry, Miss Terry, on Sunday, and I was sending to Donna, and I said, you know, if you go to Winco, you can like two two one seven zero is the the code number for for like three different bins, so you can get um, kind of like the uh, peanut butter cups. You can get uh, Hershey's Kisses, and you get something else and just by the spoonful, you know. And it's like, yeah, it was, yeah. It was uh, <laughs> they're like five uh, four ninety eight for a pound, but that's a lot of stuff for a pound, so. Anyway, so that's why I decided instead of buying the bags, I'd get those. It worked out pretty well. I owe you two forty nine now. <laughs> Bigger than that, buddy. <laughs> no, no kidding. Just leave one one egg undone and leave it on his desk because it got. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, do they need to stand on a cold summer day almost? You want to have him stand? Okay. Uh, page 159. Blessed be the name. Do you have a pianist? Oh, I do. Okay. Blessed be the name. <coughs> Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, angels host Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Be deemed a Savior, friend of man, once ruined by the fall. Thou hast devised salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of earth your kingdoms conquer, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, before we pray, uh, we may be seated. Let's be seated. Before we pray, does anybody have any prayer requests they want to uh, maybe shout out? Um, yes, Joe. Uh, for my son, um, some of you know he had a friend that died on the job site. Mm -hmm. And then um, a couple 
days ago, uh, Hannah, his, his uh, girlfriend, she was in, involved in a car accident. Her car, car is totaled. She's fine, but her car is totaled. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, he just also lost a long time frame. Um, and it's, you know, you just got to wonder if you're either rededicating his life or coming to the Lord the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. But, um, you know, to have all these things happen, it's sure. for Jason. Heavenly Father, Lord, we certainly love you, God, and we thank you so much, uh, Lord, for being our God, Lord. We thank you so much for loving us uh, the way you do. Lord, we thank you tonight for your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your grace tonight, Father. And, uh, Father, we just lift you up tonight, Lord, uh, knowing that you are so good, you are so excellent, Lord. Um, Lord, as they say, uh, holy, holy is your name, Father. And, and God, we just lift you, uh, lift you up tonight. Uh, Father, as we we're able to come to you tonight, uh, first of all, praying that uh, you'd please bless this service that we have tonight, Father. I, I pray, God, you'd meet with us tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, speak to our hearts, Lord, as we're here to meet with you tonight, Father. Uh, Lord, I pray everything we do here tonight would be pleasing and to you, and uh, Lord, that it would bring glory and honor to you and to you alone, Father. Uh, Lord, I'm lifting up uh, tonight... Uh, uh, Several prayer requests, Lord, as we're praying for Jason, uh, uh, Lord, who, um, Lord, is just having a lot of troubles in his life right now, Lord, as uh, Hannah's been in a car accident, Father, we thank you that she's, uh, that she's well and that she's okay, Father, and I pray, God, you'd work out every detail of uh, having her car uh, replaced, uh, Lord, but uh, we just lift her up uh, tonight, Lord, and God, we know that uh, Jason's lost a co-worker and a friend, Lord, and this has all happened in a week's time, Father. And Father, as it, it seems, uh, Lord, that uh, it, it's, it could actually just be an attack from the enemy, Lord. I pray, God, that you would be with Jason during this time, Lord. Help him uh, to to strive forward, Lord, uh, for you. And uh, Lord, just to keep his heart and mind on you, Lord. And through this time, I pray you give him comfort, Father. Uh, Lord, we're praying uh, for Isabel. And, uh, Father, as um, she's uh, going through some stressful times, Lord, as her mother's moving, Lord, and just some stuff going on in her life, Father, um, with her roommate, Heather, uh, going through cancer treatments, Father, God, I pray that you would uh, help her during this time, Lord, work out every detail in her life. Lord, be with Heather as she's going through treatment uh, for thyroid uh, cancer, Lord. I pray, God, you just uh, bless her and uh, have your healing hand upon her, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray tonight also for the hunt on April 3rd. Father, I pray that it would be a uh, uh, done decently and in order. I pray, God, that um, 
that with everyone who comes, Lord, that it would be a safe, uh, great time, Lord, but I pray that there would be many uh, saved. I pray that uh, there would be many that would accept uh, the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. And, Father, that in all that we do, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that we'd be a blessing to this community, Lord. And, uh, Father, I pray, God, also for, for good weather for that day, as we need that, Lord. Father, I lift up our nation today, Lord, as it's so troubled and it needs you, Lord. And, God, I pray, Father, that uh, that you would uh, just forgive the sins of this nation, Lord. I pray you'd have mercy on our nation, Father. I pray that you'd give revival to our nation. I pray, Lord, that uh, you would turn Christians uh, just to you, Lord, that uh, you would give re revival in individual Christians, Father, uh, of our nation. Lord, we need you, and uh, you're the only answer to to uh, bring this nation around back to you, Father. And we just pray that you'd help us with that. Uh, Lord, uh, praying for our police officers tonight, Father, as I've started to see so many out just around about this area, Father, I pray, God, you'd be with each and other, every one of the men and women who uh, daily uh, put their lives on the line, Father, uh, whether they're police officers, uh, first responders, firefighters. Father, I pray you'd be with each and every uh, uh, man and woman who are, who are going out to help our communities and to serve our communities, Father. Please be with them tonight. But Father, as uh, uh, we're able to uh, continue with our service tonight, Lord, I pray you'd bless the singing. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless the service to come meet with us tonight. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Joe. Now please turn to 223 Springs of Living Water. Oh, yeah. 
to the book of James, chapter 1, please. Book of James, chapter 1. We'll, we are going to continue uh, going through the book of James. And uh, I will be done by 8, I'm sure. If I can get there. All right, book of James, chapter 1. We're going to be in verse number 22. And uh, continue down through the end of the chapter, and I want to uh, preach tonight. Let's uh, let's all stand together, please, as we uh, as we read God's word. We'll get right into it. Verse twenty-two. The Bible says, "Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer," He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, 
For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, continueth therein, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion is undefiled before God the Father. Uh, before God and the Father is this. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And God, thank you for this time we have together tonight. Lord, I pray God as we're able to look to your word. I pray, Lord, you'd meet with us. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would speak to each one of our hearts as we need it, Lord. God, you know the need of everyone in this room tonight. Father, I pray, God, that you would please meet with us. I pray you'd uh, help me to uh, teach this lesson, Lord, as you see fit. God, I pray that all that's said here would be what you would want said. I pray, Lord, that all that's done here tonight would be pleasing and honorable to you, Father. God, we thank you tonight for all you're going to do. I pray you please meet with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to uh, preach tonight a little bit on be not deceived. Be not deceived. As we are continuing through uh, this, uh, the book of James, of course we know uh, James is writing to uh, the uh, Jewish believers who are scattered abroad. Uh, throughout uh, Samaria and uh, all around Jerusalem and Judea and um, sorry and we read about that in uh, the book of Acts uh, uh, I think it was chapter 8 verse 1 if I'm recalling correctly chapter 8 at the very least as uh, right after the uh, stoning of Stephen as the Bible tells us how the Jews were scattered and uh, last week we, uh, of course, went over uh, kind of who uh, uh, the book was talking to and instructing, and just to those Jews who were uh, scattered into the world, if you will. All the Jews uh, that were scattered were they went into Gentile communities, they went into different communities that maybe was not of their choosing, and uh, we they had a choice to uh, blend into that community, into the world. Uh, they had a choice uh, maybe to pull back into kind of a Jewish separation of the world and go back to their roots, if you will, or they had a choice uh, to engage that community as Christians and share the gospel and to share Jesus Christ and to live out their new Christian faith in that same in that community where Christ has put them. And uh, where we are as Christians really is where God has put us. And... Um, and so this book of James is given instruction to these Christians uh, of how they should live their Christian lives uh, as they're scattered abroad in these new churches in this, uh, in this first century time of the church being scattered uh, throughout the world. And uh, so we've had a lot of instruction in this, in this first chapter of just how to be uh, a Christian and, and, and some different things that are good for us to do. And as we enter into uh, verse 22, uh, the Bible tells us here in verse 22, uh, But be ye doers of the word, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Um, I believe in being deceived. I believe that deception is a very real thing uh, in our nation, in our world, in the spiritual warfare and in, in the Christian faith, we have an enemy who wants to deceive us. And uh, I think it's a very real thing for Christians, no matter what season of life, whether we've been saved or rededicate our lives, such as we prayed uh, for Jason uh, a few minutes ago, um, where there's problems that seem to maybe come in when we dedicate ourselves to the Lord or to the Lord's work or maybe a new Christian who's been saved, um, or whether we've uh, lived for a long time as a Christian. In fact, I think sometimes the longer the season goes, uh, the more, if you will, reconciliation we need to take with where we're at with our Christian walk. 
and not to get not get to get caught up, if you will, in uh, um, things of this world and uh, drama that's happening in this world and different, uh, you know, wicked evilness that we see going on in this world. Hey, I don't like it, and 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 neither does God, neither do you. You know, we don't like it, but we don't want to be caught up and find ourselves um, uh, adding different uh, beliefs, if you will, to our own minds or or just or just uh, getting getting caught up in things where we become deceived and and he says he says uh he says in verse 22 be ye doers of the word uh not hearers only deceiving your own selves and i want to say oftentimes deception although we want to blame the devil oftentimes deception is our own choice it's our own choice we can choose to live a deceived life if you've ever heard the term uh, ignorance is bliss, you know, what that what you don't know uh, doesn't hurt you. Uh, can I, I want to tell you right now, and this is, I'm going to just say this is from experience. That's a lie. Ignorance is not bliss, and what you don't know can send you to hell. If you don't know the gospel, um, then you're not going to heaven. If you haven't accepted Christ, you're not going to heaven. And there's there's uh, multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of deceived deceived people who live religious lives who have never accepted Christ as their Savior, and and I've I've been down that road when I was younger and I was raised in an environment, and uh, and I've learned what you don't know can really hurt you, and what he's saying here is is be not deceived. He's saying he's saying listen. Uh, be part of the word. Uh, the word he says, uh, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And what he's what he's saying here is, listen, deception can be your own choice. Now, there's some things you know that just because of unlearned, you, a person's unlearned, uh, they they may they may have learned some things that are are wrong. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily being deceived because. Here's what deception is, and I don't, want, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but here's what deception is. Deception um, is a lie with enough truth added to it to make it palatable, to make it taste good. That's what the devil does. He takes his, he takes his lie, and he takes a little bit of God's word, and he twists the two together, and he mingles it to where somebody goes, Oh, I'll believe that. I'll believe that. I mean, that's what he did with Eve in the garden, right? He took God's word, and where God put a period, and the devil put a question mark. Did God really say? And again, I don't want to get too far into the lesson, but but um, we don't want we want to be a doer, not a hearer of the word. Um, I wrote just a few things down. If you've heard of the way, then we need to walk that way. Uh, if you've heard the truth, we need to live that truth. If you've uh, heard, if you have eternal life, hey, we need to live a life that has eternity in mind. Um, you know, we need to, we need to live the word that we've learned. Uh, if you if we have a father in heaven, we should live like children of God. I'm just saying, if it, we, if we're not, we're deceiving ourselves. And uh, Jesus says in John 14 and 6, Jesus says uh, unto him, I am the way, I am the truth. And the life, no man cometh to the Father by but by me. It's a very familiar verse, but you know what? There's a lot of deception that says, "Hey, there's many ways." Jesus isn't the only way. This world wants to say, "Well, there's there's many ways to heaven. I don't have to just believe in Jesus." No, Jesus is the only way. Anything else is deception. Anything else is deception. They say, "Well, there's a way to heaven, but you know, you you, you can just be good. You don't have to, you know, have Jesus." And, and there's many people who, who will say that. I talked to a man a couple weeks ago. He says, oh, I believe, but I'm more spiritual than really, than really uh, Christian. Well, he's deceived. He's deceived. And there's so many like that. There is only one way. Jesus says, I am the, the way. He says, I am the truth. The world will tell us there's many truths. There's many truths. And, and, and there are a lot of truths, but there's only one gospel. And, and it, I drove... The church in my truck today that's true but it's not the gospel the truth sometimes is different than the than than the bible than god's word and the world wants to mingle these truths together 
uh, to create something you know that's that's not the gospel. He says, "I am the way. I am the truth. The only truth that we can really trust is what we see in God's word." And, and uh, of course, there's many variations of true things, but we're talking about biblical truth here. Jesus says, "I am the way. Uh, I am the truth." And if if we if we hear the truth, we know the truth, and we need to live that truth. He says, "I am the life." And there is eternal life, and everyone's going to live in eternity somewhere. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I don't know if I've mentioned this in here. I don't think I have. I think two weeks ago, a good friend of mine that I've known since I was a little kid, um, well, he got killed in a car accident. He's three years younger than me. Him and his whole family were in a car accident, and uh, it was a head on, and the driver of the other vehicle and him and himself. I haven't talked to him in six or seven years, I'll be honest. But what I'm saying is, he's in eternity. He's in eternity somewhere. He's in eternity somewhere. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one come to the Father but by me. Anything else is deception. And oftentimes that we can we can bring that on our own selves. Oftentimes we can find ourselves in that and not realize how we got there. And in in the Bible's telling us here, uh, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And so one little truth that we have here of Scripture is we can find ourselves deceived uh, when we are hearing the word only, and we're not practicing it. We're not applying those truths to our lives and and it's good to hear the word uh faith cometh by hearing and hearing uh by the word of god and 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 you get saved by hearing the word and 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 people accept christ by hearing the gospel but but it says here in james he's saying hey listen we need to hear the word but we also need to do it as we grow in god's grace and as we live uh, day by day and year by year and as we continue on as as children of God as Christians in this community in, in, in Portland, Oregon uh, we need to be applying the truths and, and what we learn from God's word and can I say not just what we might learn on a Sunday or a Wednesday night but in our own Bible study time and in our own uh, private time with God as we read the word of God and as we take in and nourish ourselves with the word of God and God points out through the Holy Spirit in our own hearts a truth that we are learning and that we need to apply we need to be sure that we are applying that to our lives that we may grow in grace and that we may be a blessing to those around us in our church and in our community and to those who come into this congregation uh, because we have to be growing in grace we need to stay strengthened in the word uh, so that we do not become deceived and applying those applying those truths uh, to our lives. God's given us the Word, His Word, His Bible, the only Word of God that He ever created, and, 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 and we need to hear it. We need to let the Holy Spirit speak to us. John, uh, 1 John 2 and 27, But the anointing which ye have received of Him abide in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Listen, God has given us an anointing. He's, he's given us the Holy Spirit of God. He's given us the Spirit that communicates with God directly to teach us truth and to keep us from error. And uh, we need to be sure that, we, that we're calling on God, saying, Lord, teach me your truth today. Lord, I, I, I need to learn. I do not want to be deceived. I, I want to be able to do the word. I want to be able to uh, be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only, is what uh, uh, James is telling his people here. He's saying, listen, don't just hear the word. Apply it to your lives. Let it come out in your actions. Let it come out in your speech. Let it come out in, in helping others or, or just being a, a kind heart to somebody, uh, praying for those who need it. Listen, take in God's word, but don't just listen to it. You, let's be a doer of the word. 
you have an anointing. The Holy Spirit will teach you what he's saying here. Every Christian has received an anointing, and, and that uh, same anointing can teach you and I. Uh, listen, I, we stand up here, those who teach and preach, and uh, the Word of God, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to teach us anything. And, and we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be asking God, Lord, teach me. Teach me. I do not want to be deceived. Help me to apply this to my life. Help me to be a doer of the Word. Second Peter 1 and 19, uh, the Bible tells us, We have, a, we have a, also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. What's saying here is what the Bible is telling me, it's also going to tell you. The Holy Spirit will speak to me, He will also speak uh, to you. Uh, verse 21 of Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21, For the prophecy came not of old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our teacher, and we need to be sure that as he speaks to us through his word, that we do not just hear, but that we apply scripture to our lives. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, unto all good works. And he's talking to young Timothy here who is a pastor, but this scripture is written to all of us that, that the man and the lady of God may be perfect, meaning complete. We'll never be perfect, but we can be complete in what God has to teach us that day and that we'll be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He's saying, listen, we need to have all the scripture that's that's by God, and we need to take that in and apply it to our lives. Uh, that way we are not uh, deceived. And he says, be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word. John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was was uh, with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not listen we need to be a, a, a people that are doers of the word Christ is the word we need to be doing the things that Christ would want us to do as he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit we need to apply these things to our lives. He says, be not deceived. The definition of deceived would be to be imposed upon, uh, to be led from the truth and into error, to be misled, uh, to be misled, to be beguiled. We recall in the, in the garden, Genesis chapter 3, where Eve says, uh, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent beguiled me. The serpent deceived me. I think she was using that as an excuse. Uh, she let herself get deceived. She knew God's word. The word had spoken to her uh, in Adam. And it was very clear. They had very few boundaries. One, in fact. And, uh, and she let herself be deceived. And uh, to, to frustrate, to disappoint... Uh, false appearances to be deceived a lie with enough truth mingled in it to make it palatable that's that's my little definition of deception God, God's word says that uh, if we neglect to be doers of the word we deceive ourselves I had Genesis 3 written down here, but I think we'll just go past by it. We know the story. Of course, she says in Genesis 3.13, Eve, and the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And of course, the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. The serpent deceived me, and I did eat. And of course, she had her own choice there. Jonah 
did not obey God's word. I, I want to, I, I kind of jotted some things down here, meaning if we are not doers of the word and we become and we deceive ourselves, it affects more than just ourselves. Of course, Eve was beguiled and it affected all of us. Right? Jonah didn't listen to the word. The Bible says, Now the word of God, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah. And he didn't apply it to his life. And an entire ship full of men lost everything. The mariners lost everything they owned. Because a man decided not to listen to God. He became deceived. He ran from God. And a whole group of people lost everything that they owned. All their livelihood on that ship. They, You know the story. They threw it all overboard trying to save themselves. Wondering what's, why is the ocean like this? What's going on? You know, Until they throw Jonah overboard. It was a man who he would not apply what God had told him to his heart. He would not apply it to his life. He would not obey. He was running from God. And other people pay for it. I'm just saying when we do not apply what God, God's word, you know, when we, when we are hearers and not doers, it's not like, well, it's, it's my life. It's only going to affect me. I want to say that's 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 wrong. That's a lie. First of all, what I just said is is wrong. It's not my life. It's his life. It's his life that gets to get used if I'm willing. See, I'm bought with a price, and so are you. Every one of us here tonight, we don't own ourselves. And so, when he writes here, "Be doers and not just hearers." He's, he, we could imply, listen, I need to be a doer because this isn't mine. It's loaned to me for a season. And now it indwells the Holy Spirit of God who wants to use it in a action type form, in, in, a, in, a, in a way of, of taking the word and then, and then doing something with it. Uh, again, whether it's writing a letter to a friend, maybe making a phone call to a to a son, daughter, uh, granddaughter, grandson, somebody who needs to hear from you, you know, someone who needs uplifted. We all have different gifts and talents. We all have different things that they, that we're good at doing. We don't. I I'm big on being, you know, on the edge of my comfort zone. We don't have to be there. We can do what God is, has made us good at doing. But we need to be sure that we're doing it. I, I like writing letters to somebody. Or maybe I used to write letters to somebody. I haven't for a long time. Hey, you know what? People still think handwritten letters are pretty neat. Especially friends, families. People think they're pretty neat. Every now and then I'll get, I'll get one from somebody. Not often. But I think they're pretty neat. I think they're much better than a text. I really do. Um, I'm just giving an example. I have a friend at work. And, and, I, and I, I'm only using my own examples because I have me to use. But I just, I wanted to be a blessing to a young man at work, a young family. Well, he's young to me. He's 40, I think. <laughs> he's young to me like I'm young to some people in here. They're having a new baby this weekend. Because you can schedule these things now. Even when I, we were having kids, we didn't schedule. <laughs> you just had them when they came. But, you know, this Friday, I don't know what time, but, you know, I want to bring a meal. I, to, I told him, I said, hey, Alex, I, you, you all have your baby, you know. I want to bring you a meal. I want to, we want to be, be a blessing to you. And uh, and, and all I'm saying is, It took me a long time to just to decide, yes, I'm going to do that and then commit to it. 
and you know and it's because oftentimes we can you know and that's just and I'm not even sure if I can bring up a biblical uh, verse for bringing a meal to somebody that's had a baby I just know it's something that Christians have done for years and families you know but I want to be a blessing to others in it in what I'm saying is is we have to to do it we have to take something God's put on our heart and say you know I'm going to do that I'm going to do that particular work you know and, and we're talking about the word here uh, right now but I'm excited to be able to do that to be a blessing to his family although I had to honestly I had to put forth that effort to say you know I'm going to do that I'm going to commit I'm going to and then I'm going to follow up and and uh, and then we're going to make that happen you know this this weekend or whenever they're you know they're back home what I'm just saying is whatever we're able to do you know to be a blessing to others sometimes we just have to decide you know I'm going to write that letter you know, I'm going to go visit that person that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I, I'm going to. I'm going to be a blessing to maybe just somebody that the Lord's put on your heart. And for each of us, it's different. But somebody could, you know, because that's that's applying. That's applying our Christian life to 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 put into action, if you will. And that we need to be sure that we're doing that. Okay, continuing on here, I'm getting down a rabbit hole. Jonah, uh, be you doers of the word. King Saul, we know the the story of King Saul, as he decided he was going to be the priest, as he decided he was not going to follow the word of God. It didn't just affect him; it affected everyone. As he decided that he was not going to apply what God had told him to, he was not going to apply it to his life. He decided he didn't have to do that. Well, it didn't just affect him. It affected the entire nation, his whole family. It affected um, a lot of different people. I wrote down here, My willingness to do God's word will affect other people. I know, my family, my friends, my church family. Doing God's word encourages others. As we are able to read God's word, apply that to our own lives, um... And, and it could be different for each one of us, depending on where each one of us are reading in Scripture. Uh, God's uh, given me something. I want to apply it to my life. I think it's going to help you. I don't know when or where. And as you um, read God's Word, and God gives you a nugget, something that you're like, oh, I need to, I need to apply that to my life. You know what? That by, uh, again, most likely is going to end up being a blessing to someone else in this room or to me and so as each one of us and it really is as each one of us are committed to being in the word to to praying to just you know and and then taking what god's what the holy spirit of god has given me and given you say you know i'm going to apply that it's going to be a blessing one to the other iron sharpeneth iron a soul man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. Um, as we continue on, the Bible says that uh, by being not a doer of the word, it's like looking in a mirror. It's like looking in a mirror at yourself. Verse 23, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man that beholdeth his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he was. I look in a mirror, and I don't know about any other man in this room, but I think I can identify with most of us in here. I look at a mirror... And I look at exactly what needs looked at, and I'm out. Like, I looked in a mirror. I don't need to shave. My tie is straight. I'm out. Time to go to church. Right? That's you know. I mean, that's me tonight, right? That's I think that's how a man. George, you look in the mirror. Make sure your beard's combed, right? 
All right, no big screen. Okay, I'm out. Right? I mean, I mean, I, I know as men, you know, we look in a mirror and and, uh, and and we look at what has to be looked at and we're done. You know, hair's good. Okay, you know, and and I might be wrong. There might be some guys that are like, you know, really, you know, I, I don't need to check my eyebrow. I can just okay. There's a long one. I pull it. You know, but I'm just saying is we're fast. Now, ladies, I know you're a little different. I know ladies, you know, they'll look in the mirror a little longer. They make sure every, you know, some ladies, you know, they make sure every hair is done and and their makeup's on and, 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 and everything's done just right. And I appreciate that. I really do. And I just know the guys are a little different, you know. Maybe I'm just different, but I just I just look at what has to be looked at and, I, and I'm done. But if you think on our Christian life that way. Now, and he's comparing a person who, who only hears the word as to a man who looks into the mirror and then he leaves and he forgets what he looks like. Looks into a glass is referring to a mirror. Now for men, I mean, think on if you look at your Christian life that way. I'm looking at only what I think is important to be working on myself. And then I leave. And then, of course, ladies, you look at a lot, you know, you look at more, you look at more detail. You want to be sure you're looking just right. And, but you look at what you think is important to look at in yourself. That's what we look in the mirror. Very few of us look in the mirror and just go, oh, you know. We're there, we're looking at specific things. Face, hair, you know, make sure everything's in order. And, and, then, and then you leave. But when you leave, you, you really forgot what you look like. And when you leave that mirror, you really don't know what you look like after. I go walking through the rain and I walk into a place. I don't look the same as I did when I looked at the mirror. And oftentimes our Christian life is that way. We look at, we look at ourselves. What I'm saying is we look at ourselves. We'll think, okay, I need to work on this. And I need to work on this. And I know I need to work on that. And I need to make sure this is looking good. And I mean, I need to make sure that I'm, you know, present myself to look like, you know, how I know I should look. And oftentimes we, our Christian lives are that way. And we, and we look at ourselves... But then when we get about our day and we get going, we kind of forget about what we just thought about or what we thought we need to be sure that we're looking really good about. And we forget the man of, of who, we, who we are or who we would like to be or how, we'd, how we would make ourselves to look. And, and oftentimes, oftentimes as we go throughout our day, that's kind of how it goes. But he goes on to say, but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty... And continue therein. I want to say, whosoever looketh into the word of God, the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. <clears throat> if the word of God was like the mirror on that the show, you know, that shows you the mirror mirror you know the, I don't want to compare this if the word of God shows us not who, what we think we need to work on well the word of God doesn't show us what we think we need to straighten out the word of God doesn't show us what we think we need to be sure it looks just right but as we look in the perfect law of liberty the word of God enters in enters into where we can't see in the mirror. And the Word of God enters in and it tells us, hey, you know what? Your hair's fine, but this needs fixed. Hey, you know what? The makeup's just right. But but there's some things in here that need fixed. Little adjusting. Little course readjustment. Just a little bit here and there. And the Word of God reflects if you will, shines the gospel light, the perfect law of liberty. And if it was the mirror, which I understand the verse does not call it a mirror, but the, if as we're going in context with the verse previous, 
it would be a mirror that we wouldn't see our face. We would see our heart. And we would look into that mirror of the perfect law of liberty and it would show us what needs fixed here rather than here or here. Or whatever all you ladies look at, the one, the hairs, and the, you know. But, so what I'm saying is, what we're saying here is, is that when we are only hearers of the word, we have, we're being warned. We have this warning. Hey, be careful, because if you're only hearers of the word, you're going to deceive yourselves. You're going to be like somebody looking in the mirror who's getting everything all done up just right. But you walk away and you, you forget what you look like. And then next time you look, you don't look the same. Because you've been through something. The days went on. That's why there's mirrors every place you go. In every you know, restroom, powder room, wherever you go. There's a mirror. Why? Because when you go from here to there, you don't look the same as you left. And that's our Christian life. We walk from here and drive home. You never know what's going to happen from here to home. You never know what's going to happen. You never know how our Christian life is going to be tried, tempted. Uh, just with anything that could happen. And, and, and we forget what we looked at when we left. And so we're not going to see when we get there. But if we're constantly looking into the perfect law of liberty, the God's word, and continue it therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. We want to be sure that our lives are involved uh, just in what God's teaching us and applying those to our lives and being involved in the work of the Lord and just in, in whatever we're able to do. Whatever we're able to do. By not being doers of the word, uh, we not only dece- we will not only deceive you, but uh, will affect those around you. Okay. Let's get to my next page. We're almost done. We are just about done. In fact, I am going to stop right there. My, What I want to leave us with tonight is this. As we're able to continue on through our week this week, and we're in God's Word, and we're studying, we're reading, we're praying, going through our devotions. However y'all, you know, I'm sure each one of us have a different time. I hope you have a time and a place that you're able to read and study. When God puts something on your heart, when God shows you something in His Word, and He will, and it applies to you, Let's be sure that we apply that to our lives this week. Let's be sure that we're doing what we're learning from God's Word. And I'm not pointing out any particular thing to do. Because the Holy Spirit of God is going to teach each one of us what we need, what you need. Individual. As we're all at different seasons of life, we are all have different maybe things in our lives that we're dealing with. But as the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and it, it just pierces and divideth, and, and, and it, it speaks to each one of our lives, let's be sure that we are a doer of what God has put on our heart. A doer. I believe in the teaching and the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you do too. 
And I think that if we ask him, it's a very powerful tool. It's a very powerful it's a very powerful person of the Trinity, if you will. He wants to teach us. He wants to mold and make us just how he wants us. And he does it by us doing doing what he teaches let's pray father we love you tonight lord and god thank you for this time that we have lord thank you for your word god i pray that as we read study even listen some of us listen to different uh audios lord i pray god that you would speak to our hearts i pray that lord as you as you teach each one of us what we need personally that we'd be willing to apply that to our lives and Lord that in all that we do as a church and individual Christians Lord that we would live pleasing to you and Lord just uh, excited to be able to serve you day by day Lord I thank you tonight for those who came I pray you'd uh, uh, continue to bless as we have just a short time of prayer and if those, if if anyone's got to go, Lord, I pray you just give them uh, a blessing as they uh, as they're able to go, Lord. And we thank you time in Jesus' name, Amen. If you're able to stay for a few minutes, it's about seven after. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that time to pray tonight. I think it's important. Um, and if you're able to stay, that's fine. If you're not, if it's too late, I understand. And uh, but we'll uh, just in a couple minutes, we'll take a time to, to pray here. I want to put this down.